Welcome back to the VR Aperture, your source for the most detailed news in virtual reality and reviews from an engineer's perspective. I am Destroy Troy, and I will be your host through the Aperture. This week, we'll be wrapping up our review series on the Valve Index Virtual Reality Kit with part six, the conclusion. We're gonna be running through this real quick by itemizing all the pros and cons. If you miss the beginning of this review series and you need more details or information on some of the things that we're gonna breeze through right now, I welcome you to check out the beginning of this review series. Starting with the controllers, these are the most advanced controllers in virtual reality. In fact, I believe that many reviewers aren't aware of some of the features that are included in these controllers. Obviously, you know that it has full finger tracking, including all four fingers and positional tracking for the thumb, plus pressure sensors for fingers and thumb, and proximity tracking for the index finger. This is one that some people may not be aware of, whereas the bottom three fingers and thumb are all or nothing. They're either open or closed for the most part. The index finger actually tracks the finger's proximity to the button. So as you get closer and closer, you can see the animation within um, maybe VR home or any game that's fully compatible. You'll notice that you can get the full range of motion from fully open to fully closed, unlike the rest of the fingers. So that's something some people may not be aware of. Also, another thing some people may not be aware of is the on-the-fly calibration for the fingers. The more you use it or drum your fingers on the touchpad, the more accurate the tracking becomes. And then on top of that, there is a calibration app where you can set for yourself specifically what's true north and then of course a strap-on design. So that in addition with all the other design features lends to a more intuitive control scheme. Especially for new users, they'll be able to just pick them up and interact with objects. For current users in VR, it may take some getting used to. You'll have to break that lifelong rule set in stone in your mind to never let go of your controller or it will break. And then continuing with the more physical aspects of the design, it has a more agreeable shape. Specifically for shooters, it's a more accurate pistol grip and it's less awkward, especially compared to the HTC Vive wand where it protrudes quite far from your hand, you get this huge donut and you can check out videos on YouTube, plenty of people smacking the walls and breaking their TV screens with this. And you don't, this is, you know, much more sleek design. So for the design, I would give a five out of five with all these features, but it does take a hit on ergonomics being that it's not more accommodating for large hands size wise or adjustability. And then in addition to that, the, it is over, this top surface is overcrowded. This two buttons, three buttons in fact, to count the system button, the touchpad and the thumbstick, this surface is overcrowded. So as far as ergonomics and comfort, I would only give it a, about a three out of five for those reasons. And then the functionality of all those design features is, is um, impressive considering and they continue to improve and improve upon the tracking. Then you have construction. It's made from sturdy materials and an antimicrobial strap to keep it cleaner. It does unfortunately take a hit for construction as well because the thumbsticks have proven to be a weak point. Already many users are having to send back their controllers because they're not getting a stick click while it's in the forward position. And I also kind of feel that this adjuster right here is kind of a weak spot. So I would give construction a four out of five, but that's only considering that valve eventually solves the issue and brings satisfaction to their users. Otherwise I'll have to update this video and take a greater hit for that. And then going to price, these they are expensive, but eventually when you're able to replace them individually, the, pr the price would be $135 for one, 
Whereas the HTC Vive one, several years old, is still $130 to replace. So I give the price a four out of five. Despite it being expensive, it's still, I think, a great value having included all those features. Moving on to the visor, the resolution is comparable with the more recent visors, specifically the HTC Vive Pro. But where the Valve Index excels is it has a lower persistence thanks to dual LCD displays over OLED, increased field of vision by up to 20% thanks to the dual elements or dual lenses per eye, increased fresh rate of 120 hertz and up to 144, a much, much smaller, almost indiscernible screen door effect, a larger sweet spot, decreased concentric circles as a result of the Fresnel lenses, a more scratch resistant lens, and a smooth eye relief adjuster in addition to the IPD adjuster. I just wish they had made the visor flip down, either ratcheting or locking because I sometimes have issues with it tilting up and then causing a blur. But moving on to the peripheral design features, uh, the display port connection is an improvement over the HDMI. It, the, there's no breakout box anymore, so there's less wire clutter and potentially also serves as a safety disconnect, a more flexible cord, dual front facing pass through cameras, which I will go ahead and introduce now an upcoming video where we demonstrate the Tron view for the pass through cameras in room view. And that will be the first installment for a new series called Eye Candy. Uh, moving on, amazing, amazing off ear headphones. I can't say enough about these headphones. And then a highly sturdy, easily adjustable ratcheting head strap made from sturdy materials and antimicrobial cushions. So for construction, I give five out of five. Functionality, all of these features perform almost perfectly as they were intended. And so for functionality, I give a five out of five. And for price, there is article after article criticizing how expensive the Valve Index Kit is. But considering the visor alone is only $500 and the HTC Vive Pro is still $800 and it's several years old and doesn't have nearly the features this has, I think $500 is a really good price as long as you already have the sensors. And I'm not gonna take off points for requiring sensors until inside out tracking is more reliable. And then for comfort, this visor is way more comfortable than I had originally assessed. The visor comes with this cushion, which I was very unfair to. Uh, I ignored it during the unboxing because I didn't know what it was for. Then when I learned that it was a cushion, I disregarded it because I thought it was only for smaller heads or for children. And then when I learned that it could be worn with anyone, I trivialized it because I expected it to be a, a nuisance to get fit in and out of every time you put the visor on. But it actually turns out that it squeezes in there just like a sponge and stays in on its own. So I wanna give a special thanks to one of our users who motivated me to try this cushion. I now give comfort 4.5 out of five, so thank you. But the comfort does take a hit for the reason I mentioned earlier where the visor doesn't lock into place and so it has a tendency to move. And then also, it gets crazy warm, this visor. So I took off half a point for that reason. There are already people who have designed like a blower system that fits into the, the, the frunk, as it's called, the front USB attachment. And a couple more things that are noteworthy as far as fidelity. Supposedly with the LCD screen, the blacks aren't as black as with an OLED. And some also say that the colors aren't as vibrant, but the benefits of these displays is so great that I deduct nothing for that. In fact, they 
I see really no difference as far as that goes between the HTC Vive and the Valve Index. But for functionality, I know the tethered units are intended for high-end gaming PCs, but this unit is truly intended for the highest of high-end gaming PCs. I have a $450 GTX 1070 card and I can't maintain 120 hertz refresh rate, but yet I've read articles on Reddit that there are people who have a 1080 Ti card and they're able to push that super sampling slider to 200% and sometimes much, much more than that, depending on the game. So to truly get all the benefits of the fidelity, you have to have a very expensive machine. So I take off half a point for, for that. And I feel compelled, unfortunately, to take a point from design uh, where initially I'd give it, would give it five for all its features. I have to take away a point for there being no wireless option. The most successful visor out there right now is wireless and that in conjunction to be a little bit cheaper is why it's so successful. And so until Valve comes up with a wireless accessory, the visor will take a hit for that. I know there are users already within VR that are on the HTC Vive and they're reluctant to upgrade their visor because they're more attached to their wireless accessory than they are interested in increasing the image quality. So given all of that, all the pros and cons, my final assessment is from an engineer's perspective, I give the Valve Index visor four and two thirds stars. My final thoughts are that the Valve Index visor may not hold that position for very long because foveated rendering is gonna be coming out very soon and those visors won't require nearly the high-end computer that this does. And so lower-end computers may get actually better image quality than this does currently with the same PC. This concludes our review series on the Valve Index Virtual Reality Kit. I wanna thank you once again for joining us and I hope you learned a lot from this review series, hopefully more than any other source. And if you did, please support this channel by hitting subscribe. Thank you again and have a great week.